Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sharif al Gamal, and uh, today we are going to continue our videos about design of reinforced concrete. And within this video, we'll be talking about doubly reinforced concrete sections. Okay, so within this video, we'll be learning how to design and also how to analyze a doubly reinforced concrete section. So let's start by the, knowing the difference between singly and doubly reinforced concrete rectangular sections. For the singly reinforced concrete rectangular sections, we have only reinforcement in one side and it will be in the tension side of the beam. However, for the doubly reinforced rectangular sections, we will have reinforcement in the tension side and also in the compression side. Therefore, in case of singly reinforced sections, the compression will be carried only by the concrete. However, for the doubly reinforced section, the compression force will be carried by two components. Part will be carried by the concrete, <clears throat> F capital CC, and part will be carried by the compression steel, which is called F capital SC. Of course, the tension in both cases will be carried by the tension steel. So for uh, a rectangular section with singly reinforced, the maximum capacity of that section equals to 0.156 FCUBD square. We uh, proved that together in a previous video. You can check uh, my previous videos from this link here to know how to get the maximum capacity of a singly reinforced section. So it equals to 0.156 FCUBD square. Therefore, if the ultimate uh, applied moment on the section is greater than this M maximum, which is 0.156 FCU BD square. It means in this case, the K will be greater than 0.156. And therefore this section will require compression steel. So singly reinforced in this case will not be enough. And in this case, to design this section, we will need to add a compression steel and change the section from singly to doubly reinforced concrete sections. According to the code, uh, in this case, we are going to fix the X, which is the distance from the compression side to the neutral, neutral axis to be equal to 0.5 D. Therefore, if this is S equals 0.9 X and the X will be replaced by 0.5 D, so we can calculate the Z in this case, Z equals D minus 0.9x divided by 2. If we replace the 0.9x or the x in this equation by 0.5d, and the summation of this will be z equals to 0.0775d. So in the design of doubly reinforced rectangular sections, according to the BS code, the lever arm z equals will be a fixed value, which is equal to 0.775d. Once we knew that, let's see together how to get the design equations for uh, both tension steel and compression steel in double reinforced concrete rectangular sections. This is the cross section, B is the width, D is the effective depth. And in this case, we have an additional uh, value here, which is D dash. D dash is the distance from the compression face to the center line of the compression steel. This is the strain distribution. At the level of the compression steel, we have epsilon SC, and the distance X here will be fixed as a value of 0.5D. This is the compression block. We will have two forces, F capital CC, which is, this is with the compression in the concrete, and F capital SC, this is the compression in the compression steel, the stop steel, and also we have a tension force F capital ST, which is the force carried by the tension steel. This will be the Z and the distance here 0.9X or it will be 0.45D. The stress according to the BS code will be 0.45 FCU and we learned all of this in our previous videos. And let's now get the force in the tension steel equals 0.95 F yield AST, assuming that the tension steel is yielding. So it is the stress multiplied by the area. Now the force in the compression steel, again equal to the stress in the compression steel, multiplied by the area of the compression steel. And finally, to get the force in the concrete. So again, it will be the stress multiplied by this 
area. So the stress is 0.45 FCU multiplied by B multiplied by this height, which is 0.45 uh, D. By doing that, you will reach to this value, 0.201 FCU times B times D. Now to be able to get the design equations, we are going to make two equilibriums. The first equilibrium, which is equation number one, will make the equilibrium of the horizontal forces here. So the tension force FST equals the total compression force, which is coming from two components, FCC and FSC. So this is equation number one. And now also we can take a moment at the position of the tension steel equals uh, two for two moments, moment coming from the compression in the concrete and moment coming from the compression in the steel. So it equals to FCC times Z. This is the compression coming from the, the moment coming from the compression in the concrete plus FSC times its distance, which is D dash, D minus D dash. The total is D minus this part is D dash. So this will be the distance D minus D dash. So we have equation number one and equation number two by substituting these values of the FST, FCC, and FSC into these equations, we'll be able to reach to the design equations of double reinforced rectangular sections. And we will reach to equation uh, number four here, ASC, the area of the compression steel equals to K minus K dash multiplied by FCU BD square divided by FSC times D minus D dash. The K is, as you know, it is M ultimate divided by FCU BD square. K dash is a constant value, which is 0.156. And the remaining values are known. FSC here is the stress in the compression steel. So if the compression steel is yielding, we are going to change this FSC by 0.95 F yield, OK? And if not, we will see together how to get this value of FSC uh, within like one minute. Now, once we get the area in the compression steel, we will be able also to get the area of the tension steel. We get it from this equation here, 0.156 FCU BD squared divided by 0.95 F yield times Z plus area of the compression steel that we got it from the above equation here. So from equation four and equation five, we'll be able to get the area of the compression steel and area of the tension steel. And keep in mind in that in this equation here, the Z will be constant value, which is 0.775D. Now, if we want to check if the compression steel is yielding or not, we can do that from the strain distribution. From the similarity of triangles here, we can get the strain in the compression steel equals to 0 0.0035 minus 0 0.007 D dash minus divided by D. Okay, so for uh, steel yielding with F yield 460, uh, the epsilon yield equal to 0 0.002185, or we can say 0 0.0021. Nine, which is coming from 0.95 F field divided by the modulus or assisty of the steel reinforcement, 200,000 megapascal. So this will give us this value. Let's say here the strain in the steel will reach to the yield. So we can say this is strain equal to this value. Okay, from this equation here, we can get the relation between D dash over D. And based on that ratio, we will be able to decide if the compression steel will yield or not. So let's conclude that. If uh, the D dash over D is less than 0.187, this means that compression steel yields. If the D dash over D is greater than 0.187, compression steel will not yield. Don't worry because like within one minute, we will see the design steps with a very clear step. So uh, you would understand it well. Just wait and you will learn. If the compression steel is not yielding, then in equation four, we are going to use FSC equals to 700 minus 1,400 D dash over D, which is ES, the modulus or assisty of the steel 200,000 multiplied by the epsilon SCC, which is coming from this equation. So multiply 200,000 by this equation here, it will be 700 minus 1,400 D dash over D. 
Now let's conclude that and make it in a very clear uh, steps. Uh, so the design steps of double reinforced rectangular section, what is given? The given will be the dimensions of the cross section. Even as dimension, if it is not given, you are going to assume the dimensions. How to do that? Just see uh, my videos about design of beams and you will uh, learn how to assume good dimensions for beams according to the code. So dimensions here will be given or will be assumed by you. FCU, F yield, and also the ultimate moment, applied moment on the cross section. What will be required? Required to find the area of the steel, area of the steel in the compression side, and area of the steel in the tension side. So let's see the steps one by one. The first step, as we did in the singly reinforced rectangular section, we are going to start by calculating K. So the K equals M ultimate divided by FCU BD square. And don't forget that all units here should be in Newton and millimeter. So if you have the moment is in kilo Newton meter, it should be multiplied by 10 to power six, okay? FCU B D square all Newton and millimeter. So we calculate the K and then based on the value of the K, we will decide if the K is less than or equal to 0.156. This will be a single reinforced rectangular section. No steel compression steel is required. And then we design it as we did in the single reinforced rectangular section design. You can check it from the video here. Okay. If the K is greater than 0.156, in this case, it means this will be double reinforced concrete rectangular section and the compression steel is required in this case. And then we have to go to step number two. For step number two, we have to check if the compression steel yields or not to be able to apply the values, the correct value in equations four and five. So we have to check D dash over D. D dash over D, if it is less than 0.187, then the FSC will be uh, 0.95 F yield. It means that the compression steel is yielding and therefore we will use the maximum value. If D dash over D is greater than 0.187, in this case, the compression steel is not yielding and we have to get the FSC from this equation 700 minus 1400 D dash over D. So from step number two, you will be able to get the FCC. Otherwise it is 0.95 F yield or 700 minus 1,400 D dash over D. And then now we are ready to go to step number three to calculate the compression steel and the tension steel. And we can do that from the, this equation for the compression steel and the second equation here for the tension steel. And keep in mind here that the K dash in this equation equals 0.156. The K is already calculated from the first step. And in this equation here, the Z, keep in mind also that the Z will equal to 0.775D. Choose number and diameter of bars and calculate the area steel provided to complete the design of the section. These are the design steps, four steps, one, two, three, four clear steps. Let's now take an example to make it more clear for you. Here, a rectangular beam with 260 millimeter wide 440 millimeter effective depth. This is subjected to ultimate design moment of 285 kilonewton meter. FCU is given, F yield also is given, and uh, D dash also is given. So what is required? We need to design and get the reinforcement. So in this case, let's uh, uh, summarize all the data. B is 260, D is 440, M ultimate, FCU and D dash and F yield. And we'll start by the first step, calculating the K. K equals M ultimate divided by FCU BD square by substituting the values here. We found that the K is greater than 0.156. It means this uh, will require compression steel. So we need to have compression steel. So we go to step number two. We calculate D dash over D. D dash over D is 0.11, less than 0.187. It means compression steel will be yielding. And therefore, we can substitute the value of FSC by 0.95 F yield. Then we go to step number uh, three, calculating the area of the compression steel by substituting all the values. And we get 292 millimeter square. And then from equation number five, we can get the area of tension steel equal this part 
plus the area we calculated from the compression steel. Many students, they forgot to add this area of the compression steel into this equation. And this is a mistake. It should be added to the equation number five here, area of the tension steel equal this part plus the area of the compression steel calculated from equation number four. And therefore, this will be the area of the tension steel. And the last step is choose suitable diameter and uh, number of bars. I here uh, choose for the bottom steel 6020 with AS provided uh, 1,885 uh, as a bottom steel or a tension steel. And in the compression steel, I use 3T12 with this area provided. And we can draw this as this is like the tension steel and this is the compression steel 6020 and 3 T12. This will conclude the first uh, example and the design steps of double reinforced rectangular sections. Let's now go to the analysis steps of double reinforced rectangular sections. In this case, the given will be dimensions. Area of the steel is the tension and compression, FCU and FE yield. The required it will be the ultimate capacity of the cross section. So the first step is to check that compression steel yields. We are going to check that by calculating D dash over D. And if it is less than 0.187, it means that FSC equal to 0.95 F yield. Otherwise, it will be 700 minus 1,400 D dash over D. This is very similar to what we did in the design. Also, we checked D dash over D. We are going to do that also here in the analysis steps. Then the second step, it will be assuming that tension steel yields, and then we will make equilibrium between the forces. So FST, the tension, equals FSC plus FCC. Okay. We substitute these values by the values of FS, FCC, FST, and FSC. Okay. So by substituting the values and assuming that the tension steel is yielding, so we are going to replace FST by 0.95 F yield. And from this equation, the only unknown will be the S. So we calculate the S from this equation, which is the equilibrium here by just rearranging the equation, we get the S. And once we get the S, we also can get the X equals S over 0.9. This will be in millimeters. Then let's check if the tension steel is yielding or not. We assume that the tension steel is yielding. Now let's check if the tension steel is yielding. And this is, by the way, this is step second step and third step. This is very similar to the uh, analysis of singly reinforced rectangular section, which you can see from this video here. And to check if the tension steel yield, we can check from the strain. The strain in the tension steel equals 0.0035 D minus X over X. And if it is greater than 0.00218, it means it is still is yielding, okay? You can also make this a check by calculating uh, X is less than X balanced. If it is less than X balanced, it means the tension is still is also yielding. If the tension is still is yielding, yeah, in, in, in step number three, you found that the tension is still is yielding, you can go directly to tension to uh, step number four, calculating the capacity M ultimate equals FSC times D minus D dash plus FCC times Z, which is D minus S over two. We can calculate it uh, from this equation here. And don't forget to divide by 10 to power six to get it in kilonewton meter. Now, if in step number three, the tension steel was not yielding, what to do? Okay, if the tension steel is not yielding, so we have to recalculate the values here. We have to recalculate the X because what we did here is not correct and we have to recalculate it again. Okay, so to do that, we use FST uh, to get it equals the modular velocity multiplied by the strain. So it will be 700 times D minus X over X. This is very similar to what we did in the single reinforced rectangular sections. So this will be the stress in the steel. And then we are going to uh, recalculate X in step number two. But keep in mind that we, in this uh, part, we, uh, the 0.95 F yield, and instead of 0.95 F yield ASCT, for 0.595 uh, F yield will be replaced by uh, this value 700 D minus X over X. So the first part here, instead of 0.95 F yield ASCT, it will be 700 times D minus X over X. 
times a is t, and in this case, you have a quadratic equation of x, you can calculate x. Once you calculate it, x, you can go to step number four directly and then calculate the ultimate capacity of the section from step number four. These are the four steps. They are very similar to the case of single reinforced rectangular section. We add step number one to check if the compression steel is yielding or not. Then all other steps are similar, except you add FSC to the equations. Let's now summarize this by solving an example. In this example, we have a cross section with this B is given, B dash, D, area steel in the tension, area steel in the compression. And what is required is required to get the capacity of the section. So we are going to start by the first step, calculating D dash over D. It is less than 0.187. Uh, it means the compression steel is yielding. Then we can go to step number two, uh, that assuming that the tension steel is yielding, it means the FST equal 0.95 FE yield, and we we'll make equilibrium between the forces to get this. Let's make equilibrium. So the tension equals the compression in the concrete plus the compression in the steel. The only unknown here will be the value of S. So by doing that, we can get the S from this equation. S equal 206 millimeter. And then we can get the X equals S over 0.9. It will be 229 millimeter. Now we need to check if the tension steel is yielding or not. We are going to get the strain in the tension steel from this equation, 0 0.0035 D minus X over X equals 0.004. This is much greater than the yield strain of the steel, which is 0 0.00219. It means the tension steel is yielding and our assumption is correct. Then we can calculate the capacity of the section from M equals uh, FCC times Z plus FST times D minus D dash. We are going to, we have all the values substituting the uh, S by the value that we calculated. Z equals D minus S over two. And the value, don't forget to divide by 10 to power six. Just before we finish, here when we are making analysis, you can calculate the Z as is. The Z always will be D minus S over two. But in the design, we fix the Z as 0.775D. In the analysis, you have to calculate the Z as we get it from the analysis. So it is uh, D minus uh, S over two as usual, as we did also in the singular reinforced rectangular section. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, uh, please click on like, subscribe, and share the video with others. Thank you and see you in a coming video. Goodbye.